Hey everybody, welcome back to the VMP Performance YouTube channel. I'm JD, our social media guy here, and in today's video, we're going to cover the F-150 variations of the Coyote engine. Very similar to the way that we covered the Coyote variations in the Mustang in one of our recent videos. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First and foremost, I want to note that we are purely covering the stock engine as equipped in each one of these vehicles from 2011 through the current of 2021. First, let's cover the similarities. They're both aluminum block and aluminum cylinder head engines. They both feature twin independent variable cam timing. That's a lot of words. TIVCT for short. The displacement changes with the generations the same as the Mustang. So they were 302 cubic inches all the way up through uh, 2017 and 2018. They went to 307 cubic inches or 93 millimeters in bore. Some of the biggest differences between the Coyote uh, Mustang engine and the truck engine is going to be the camshaft profiles. The Mustangs feature a, a longer duration versus the uh, the F-150 featuring a short duration. Long duration uh, in the cam profile is for high RPM horsepower. Uh, a short duration camshaft is gonna produce more low end, low RPM torque. Uh, so that's the, the big difference in the cams there. So there's some compression ratio differences as well. From 2011 to 2017, the F-150 had 10 and a half to one compression versus the Mustang's 11 to one compression. And then both platforms bumped up to 12 to one compression with direct injection as of 2018. And last but not least, if you intend to use one of these engines for a swap platform, you're going to notice that the uh, accessory mounting positions are different on the F-150 versus the Mustang. So you'll want to keep that in mind depending on your, uh, your space constraints while uh, performing a swap or at least planning out your build. So now we're going to cover the differences in the generations. The timeline for the F-150 is very similar to the Mustang, almost identical. 11 to 14 was Gen 1. 15 to 17 was Gen 2, 18 to 20 is Gen 3, and then we have the addition of the Gen 4 Coyote engine, which is brand new for 2021. So for Gen 1, the F-150 engine was 10 and a half to one compression. It made 360 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque. Uh, and it also used a fender well intake duct. This mounted into the driver's side fender well and drew air in from there. So in 2015, the second generation of Coyote engine was released into the F-150. This included a, a few small changes, particularly to the intake track. Um, the intake itself was changed uh, with minor changes to the way the, uh, the runners were designed, as well as the addition of IMRCs to help with drivability across the power band as well as fuel economy. They also changed the, uh, the intake ducting to a ram hour style instead of a fender well style. Uh, so this, uh, what it did is it made the air box mount up above the driver's side front wheel and then put a, uh, a ram air vent that came up on top of the core support to start drawing air from uh, like cold fresh air from the front of the vehicle instead of the fender well. Uh, these changes netted um, a, a, uh, an increase of horsepower to 385. Uh, horsepower and 387 pound-feet of torque. Generation 3 starting in 2018 led to the biggest set of changes for the Coyote engine in the F-150. The compression ratio was increased to 12 to 1. They added direct injection. Uh, again, another small intake manifold change there. Um, and, and these changes netted uh, 395 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque. Um, this also included the bore and stroke changes that occurred in the Mustang, leading to 307 cubic inches versus the 302 cubic inches as was found in the earlier generations of Coyotes. They, uh, they also received the plasma wire transfer arc cylinder liners, uh, just like the Mustang did. Um, and they got a composite 10 quart oil pan over the seven quart steel pans that were in the previous generations. So that brings us to the 2021 F-150 and the new Gen 4 Coyote engine. In this application, this engine makes 400 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. That's up five horsepower and 10 pound-feet of torque over the previous generation. Um, they also implemented a few pretty big changes. Some of the biggest changes that the Coyote engine has seen uh, to date. Uh, first and foremost would be cylinder deactivation and second would be a belt-driven oil pump system. So cylinder deactivation, uh, for, for those of you that may be unfamiliar with it, uh, very simply put, uh, is de deactivating half of the cylinders for the sake of fuel economy under light load. So let's say you're going down the interstate, 70 miles an hour, set your cruise control, half of the engine is going to be deactivated or half of the cylinders are going to be deactivated. And this is to comply with the minimum fuel economy requirements that the government has in place for manufacturers. Second is going to be that belt driven oil pump system. The, uh, the belt driven oil pump system is driven by a Kevlar reinforced wet belt, meaning it's a belt that's submerged in oil or has contact with fluid of some sort for lubrication. Um, this oil pump drive system, um, from what I've read, 
uh, has been tested up to 1100 horsepower in house at Ford and shouldn't be a problem. This is uh, this is a system that's used on uh, pro mod race cars like uh, dry sump systems with belt drives. Um, the technology is not new, it's just new to the Coyote platform. We look forward to seeing how the aftermarket develops. Uh, we're awaiting um, the ability for the ECUs to be unlocked so we can start doing some tuning and then start developing products from there. So be sure to stay tuned to our social media as these developments occur. We'll, uh, we'll be sure to update everyone uh, as we start uh, developing products and, and uh, doing tuning and things of this sort on this platform. All that being said, thank you so much for checking out the video. We hope it was helpful. If you have any comments or uh, questions, uh, suggestions for the next video for us to deep dive like this, be sure to drop down in the comments below and let us know. We'd love to hear what you guys would like to see next. Outside of that, uh, thank you so much for checking out the video. We'll see you in the next one.